I'm delighted to be back here. I have been here before as a TV, and I'm delighted. It's an absolute privilege to be back the 10th president of this beautiful country. So what I was looking to investigate is comparing natural methods of chicken egg incubation to artificial methods for small-scale farming to see which is the optimal method. I have a farming background myself. It is mainly dairy cows, but we also have a flock of hens that I look after. So it was just when I was looking into incubating our own eggs that I realized that there's very little data on like small-scale farms. It was all cows and egg incubators where the data just wasn't applicable to my situation. Uh, so I just wanted to gather all the data and be able to publish it so people who were, were in my position could have a look at that and make an informed decision for themselves based on their priorities. Um, I found that the overall cost is about 30 cents cheaper per successfully hatched egg through the natural method and you also have a lower carbon footprint uh, when you use the natural method. However, the successful hatch rates are slightly higher on the artificial incubator, about 16% but that's not enough to make up for the um, cost. So for me, the natural method makes the most sense. But again, as I said, it's about just getting the information out there so people can choose what makes the most sense for them. Well, our project looks at reducing emissions of farm without reducing the amount of cattle on them. So um, we did, there's three parts to this project. So we had twice a day versus, we looked at twice a day versus once a day feeding on calves to see how that, um, like reduce labour on farm and have costs on the farm and then we looked at um, treating slurry with acid and bacteria and then we looked at how that treated slurry performed on the grass growth. We were inspired by, we heard from our teachers that methane was a big issue especially with global warming and you know cattle farms especially being a big issue but our farms are such a big part of our Irish identity so we didn't want to rather than cutting cattle that we decided to find ways that we could, you know, fix the problem without having to ruin our farms. Well, our findings was that the slurry that had the sulfuric acid added to it reduced methane emissions by 47%, which is obviously a great um, decrease. And the bacteria added slurry reduced the emissions by 80%, which is obviously even better. And when we put this slurry onto the grass, the sulfuric acid slurry uh, increased grass growth rather than the control slurry. So our project is an investigation into the impact of urbanization in Cork City on soil health. So what we did is we investigated the soil organic carbon and phosphorus solubilizing bacteria levels across the soils. And then we also investigated the, the relationship between these two areas. See, soil is the biggest terrestrial carbon sink on the planet. Yeah? So it's very important that our soil stays healthy for both growing uh, plants and our climate. So our inspiration is we want to find out in Cork and in other cities all over the world how our soil is doing and how this can affect our climate. Uh, the aim of our project we have here today was to raise awareness for beef production or the genetics in beef production to maximise it in the dairy industry. I suppose inspiration, inspiration is just to make farms aware of the genetics of each beef breed and just helping them maximise beef production and just to make them aware of that. Uh, we found Angus was the best breed for beef production because the white now and they grow mostly easily. Our project is all based off of generation renewal and farming. So we looked at why younger people aren't getting involved and things that we can do that can help older people staying involved in the sector. Um, we all come from farming backgrounds. I personally work for the FRS and Rear works for Cork Mouse. We've discovered that farmers are really struggling and if there's anything we can do to help. We hope that the government will take some initiative with it because if it was the same in any other sector, if there was 38% of nurses like for over 65, there'd be action taken, but the government isn't taking any action on this.